Gang, let's do a little bit of trigonometry. Okay, let's do some trigonometry. Okay, now trigonometry at the beginning stages of uh, university, uh, at high school basically. Uh, so check this out. Uh, in grade eight, nine, even in grade ten, they tell you trigonometry is this trick, and it is. And it is right. So grade eight, nine, and not grade, grade. We'll talk about high school. Grade eight, nine, and ten. So grade eight, nine, and ten grades, right? They say trig is about right angle triangles in Canada, anyway. They tell you trig is about right angle triangles. Okay. In grade eleven and twelve. 11, 12 grades. You realize trig is really about circles. Okay. That's one of the important things you have to really appreciate, especially when you're getting into grade 11 and grade 12. Because when we're trying to study circles, Right. Let's assume you're trying to study circles. And we've talked about this. Why would you want to try to study a circle? Right. You would try to study a circle because a circle represents the ideal cyclic function. Because let's assume you stand here. You're here and you're moving around. Doink, 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 doink. Right. And doink. If you're here, you're moving around then you've gone one cycle, right? And the reason we want to study cyclic functions is because cycles are everywhere in our world, everywhere in our world. Not just the earth revolving around the sun, rotating on its axes, the moon going around having some kind of orbit, the tides of the ocean going up and down, right? It's not just the physical part of the cyclic nature of life. It's also embedded within biology, our systems, our matter that we occupy. Okay. It's also embedded within economics. Okay. Huge, huge. You can actually invest money in cyclic companies, right? Invest when the cycle is down, cycle goes up, you make you sell it, you buy. And there's trillions of dollars, really trillions of dollars being traded on this cycle. We talked about this, right? We did a whole thing based on uh, personal finance, right? Investing in personal finance. We have a playlist on Sensor2 that talks about the cyclic nature. And these cycles can vary depending on if you want to look at it on the micro scale or the macro scale right are you just looking at it as a if you're a trader as a day trader or you're investing for your retirement on a long scale right are you looking at it based on millisecond trading which is there's a lot of programs out there most stocks on the market are traded based on are automatic it's machines doing it right minute 10 minute day week month year decade is that what you're investing in what cycle what speed are you investing right is it going to take you you know one second to make this cycle or is it going to take you one day to complete the cycle is it going to take you one week one month one year one decade right doesn't make a difference in regards to analyzing the circle because if you're studying a cyclic nature it applies to all of these right you don't care about the length the time it takes to complete a cycle you just want to know how to analyze the cycle right apologies if I'm not reading the chat game because I want to get this train of thought out of the way right so 
one of the reasons we study circles is because they are the ideal cyclic function because if a cycle fits this model right or if we can create a base model right mathematical model right that we can analyze based on the ideal cyclic function we can take that and apply it to multiple systems within our society may it be based on economics politics biology right nature doesn't matter right that's the reason we study circles right so what is the one thing you do when you study cyclic functions okay what is the thing you do to use study cyclic functions you take the ideal cyclic function let's erase those you take the ideal cyclic function let's create another circle right you take the ideal cyclic function which is a circle you find its center right and you put it on a grid you break it down right that way you can put numbers on on your circle right so we put on a Cartesian coordinate system that's what this is called Cartesian coordinate system X and Y axes and we say okay if we're standing here right and if we're gonna go around the circle how do we analyze that the way you analyze this the way you analyze this is let's say you want to move here You can say, okay, go up a certain angle, a certain distance along the arc length of the angle, right? Or you could also do this because you put on the Cartesian coordinate system. You could say, create your right angle triangle, and that links these guys up, right? That's how the triangle, right angle triangle is connected to a circle. You create a right angle triangle, and this becomes your X, and this becomes your Y. So the coordinate here is now X and Y, right? So on a circle, right, if you want to know where to go if you're standing here, right, I could tell you to go a certain angle, on the circle at a certain radius from a certain center point and you end up there or I could give you the coordinates of the circle of where you want to end up right easy right. one of the things we do in mathematics or mathematicians do right they will try to simplify calculations as much as possible and the easiest number to deal with is the number one right so one thing they do, they take a circle, they're trying to analyze this, trying to simplify things, right? You call this a unit circle, unit circle. And what is a unit circle? It's a circle where the radius is equal to one, right? So we're gonna take this and say, the radius R is equal to one. When you're talking about a circle that has a radius of one, you call it a unit circle. That's it. Simple calculation. Okay. Now, we want to analyze this. We want to figure out what happens when you have to deal with a cyclic function with something that repeats, right? Well, you could do this. You could do this. You could say, you know what? Because this is based on a Cartesian coordinate system, right? We're going to have a couple things that happen. Okay. One of them is our X value here is going to change as we move along the circle, right? Because this X is basically going to move this way or this way depending on where you are here 
right? As you move along, this x is going to move along, right? And if the radius of this thing is 1, then based on a Cartesian coordinate system, the point here, if the radius is 1, you bring this thing down, well, the x point is 1. That's a given, right? Because we're dealing with a unit circle and it's got a radius of 1, so this length here is going to be 1. And the y, the y value here is zero right so you can say okay you know what i want to i want to find out what happens right what happens to my x value and my y value as i move around the circle right as i move around the circle i want to know what happens so for example let's take a look at this what's our x value here and y y value there do you guys know and then try to figure out, tell me what the x value is here and what the y value will be here and what the x value will be here and what the y value will be here. Okay. What do you guys think? What is it going to be? Right? Because once you see it, you cannot unsee it. Right? Once you see this, you cannot unsee. Okay. What's going to happen if the radius of this thing is 1? As you move this way, right, it's the radius. Exactly, Ronnie, right? Boink. So you move along here. Well, the x value from here, it's starting at 1, and it's getting smaller, 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 smaller. Here it's 0. So the x value becomes 0. The y value started off here at 0 and worked its way up, right? And if the radius is 1, that's 1, right? Yeah, negative 1 and 0, because you're coming this way. The x value of 0 here is going in a negative direction, so this becomes negative 1 and 0, right? And as you move down, right, the y value went from 1, reached 0, and it goes to negative 1. So this becomes 0 and negative 1. So what you can do is say, okay, cool, we got some base coordinates for this unit circle for the x and y value, right? So let's take this information and create another graph, okay? And we're going to do this. Where should we? Yeah, we'll do this here. Oops. My line is not straight there. Let's make it straight. Okay. So, first of all, here, let's make two. Okay. How many degrees is it all the way around the circle? Okay. The whole imagery number derivation also comes from this imagine them yeah 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 so take a look at this right 360 degrees right so if you move all the way around the circle if you turn around we, we just did a 360 that would go 360 Ronnie everybody's 360 we know it's 360 all the way around German minister doesn't German minister <laughs> thought that 360 went met 180 that's the level of intelligence right we're the smart ones right plutonic plurus xbox 360 baby ronnie says <laughs> when dom pupils plutonic plurus says right so a full circle a full, full cycle right and that's what we're going to call it one cycle takes 360 degrees right so we want to take a look at one cycle because as soon as we can figure out what happens in one cycle we know what happens in every cycle because it repeats brilliant brilliant right we figure that out we figure it out for a thousand cycles infinite cycles we can figure it out for the backwards <laughs> going around right 
So let's look at one cycle. One cycle is 360 degrees, right? So on the x-axis, we're going to put theta degrees. Okay. So let's put the numbers on there for now. We go from 0 to 360 degrees. 0 to 360 degrees. And the reason I'm making two graphs is because we're going to uh, do two graphs, right? We're going to graph the movement of the x coordinate, what the x does, and what the y does. Right? Because as you're moving along, when you move here, your y value is here. When you go there, your y value is that. Doink, 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 doink. Right? So that's what we're going to look at. Let's put the y value in the top and the x value in the bottom graph. So we're going to call this y and we're going to call this x. Okay. One thing you want to do, you want to find out the range. Okay. Pourquoi? What? Trigonometry can be interesting. Whoa, mind blown. <laughs> we'll talk about so the uh, sine, sinus or cosine waves is just shifted. So it's just shifted. Indeed, we'll talk about it. Take a look. So let's put the y up top, x in the bottom graph. Okay. And let's talk about the range that we're going to do, right? Because what we did right now, we said we defined the parameters. Right? Like if you're playing a game, like a soccer, football game, basketball game, but you draw the map, right? Okay. Robert Anton Wilson, or was it Timothy Leary, they called it the mind map or something like this? The map of the, oh, I forget the terminology for, uh, what do you call it? Robert Anton, uh, mapping the something. Right? So for the degrees, we went from 0 to 360. Because after 360, it repeats, right? Okay. What's the range that the Y can go? Well, if we start here, the Y can be zero, right? It goes all the way up here, and the Y reaches a maximum of one, right? And then it starts coming down again, right? Do, 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 do. Reaches zero again goes down again all the way to negative one and then goes up again to zero so the limit the boundary that our y value can exist in is between one and negative one so let's put our limits on there one and negative one right. it can go from start from zero go all the way to one come back down to negative one go up to zero Right? Well, where does it do this? Where does it do this? Well, it does it. The maximum points, right, occurs here, and that's 90 degrees, right? If you go from there to there, that's 90 degrees. The minimum point occurs at 270 degrees. But one thing you should have noticed that we're talking about a circle. Right? That's the beauty of it, right? Once you apply it on a grid and take a look at it, break it down, right? When you're a kid, when you take things apart, you can understand what they are, right? Or try to understand what they are, what their components are, and then maybe you could create something new or put it back together again. Maybe you could put it back together better, right? So when we're taking a look at a circle, right, going around and around and around, before we put a grid on it, it was a whole circle we were looking at. And it could have varied from one location to another. But as soon as we put a grid on it, we realize that, hey, take a look at this thing. In this quadrant, this quadrant, right, when we break it into a quarter, this thing is also sort of mirrored here. And then it's mirrored here and it's mirrored there. So logic says, if we can understand what's happening in this quadrant, we can understand what's happening here, here, and here. Cool. So these four quadrants really make up the full circle. When we can understand the first quadrant, we can pretty much understand the second quadrant, the third quadrant, the fourth quadrant, right? Our critical points 
really to divide these quadrants are the following this point this point this point and this point so on the theta axis here on the theta axis here let's put the degrees on here because we went from 0 to 360 degrees we went all the way around so let's break this into the quadrants that we're interested in so this quadrant here this point here is at 90 degrees you come this way that's at 180 degrees you come all the way here that's 270 degrees and then if you go all the way that's 360 degrees right so let's break break it down into the four quadrants that we have so if you want to break 0 to 360 down to four quadrants and I put out a video on this on how to break a line into pieces a long time ago like 10 years ago I put out this video how to break a line into pieces because we want to break it into four pieces is even cut it in half so we're going to cut this in half and then we're going to have two quadrants here and two quadrants here and two is even so break it in half again break it in half again and then what we got, this becomes 90, 180, 270, and then 360. Zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees. Right? Okay. Cool. We're going to do the same here. Let's line them up. 90, 180, 270. Right? Okay, cool. Now we're ready to put our points on here because we have our this is called the domain for the x-axis but anyway we have our boundary for the x we got our boundary for the y and we got the quadrants marked off right and the x also does the same goes from one to negative one right goes all the way to one and then comes back to negative one one negative one one negative one right so let's do this we're going to break the x as well from one all the way to negative one now let's figure out man this is relaxing awesome <laughs> relaxing math is the best math <laughs> all right so what we want to do is figure out what's going on in these quadrants where we are on here right here for the y we're at zero when we're at zero degrees the y is zero so we're here actually let's do this in different color let's do this in green we like green let's do green right who knew learning math was so relaxing no wonder all the students fall asleep in math class. i some i hope you're not finding this boring though this is relaxing but not boring i hope right unfortunately sometimes um, you don't get the that aspect of it when you're sitting in a classroom air conditioning going buzzing 30 people some don't care some of the people sometimes that don't care are the instructors and usually the curriculum is set up not to be exciting ronnie i love math me too so when we're standing here right our y value is zero cool we're gonna put it there let's look at the nodes here when we're standing here our y value is one so at 90 degrees we're at one Let's go to this node. At this point, our y value is 0, and we're at 180 degrees, right? So at 180 degrees, we're back down to 0. Over here, we're at 270 degrees, and our y value is negative 1. And if we go back to 0 again, our y value is 0, and we're at? 360 degrees right so we're back here now take a look at this thing you might look at this and go oh so the graph must look like this lines going straight but it doesn't one of the reasons it doesn't is because this is curved Weep. right so the way we connect these dots is not just lines going like this it's curved
Now, if you love music, that should be, you should know what that is. And that's sound wave, really. If you like going to the ocean, swimming, you should be familiar with this. That's waves in the ocean. If you're trading stocks, you should be familiar with this type of motion. That's trading highs and lows, right? If you understand what light is, you'll know that light is a wave, particle wave, right? Elder God, we do this math in my Wing Chun training. Really? Very cool. Very cool. Green for hope, also for qua. Not green for stupid climate. But no, can't wait to see Chicho draw the perfect waves. Awesome. We make it Chicho waves. Ah, nice, nice, nice. Sweet, sweet. Sir Wise Brat. Salutations. Right? So this, this, this wave has a name okay we call it a sine wave sine wave okay let's do it for the x as well right where we are on the x-axis as we move around the circle what our x position is and then Hard to do it with two things. How do we do this? We go as we're moving around. Oh, you can't even see my other pen. As we're moving around. Oh my god, it's so difficult to do. It's like an amusement park thing when you're doing your thing, right? The x axis looks like this. When we're at zero degrees, we're at one. When we're at 90 degrees, we're at zero. When we're at 180 degrees, the x is negative one. When we're at 270 degrees, the X is zero again. And we're at 360 degrees, we're at one again. So this way for the X axis looks like this. Right. Now, remember, this thing keeps on going around and around and around. So this doesn't end here. This continues like this and does this it's basically picking up from here and going like this so this part goes like this over here is picking up just like this and going like this again right so it continues same with this right and it comes down right? this one is called a cosine wave cosine wave sine wave okay. now how is this related to triangles well it kicks into Sokotoa, sine, cosine, uh, and tangent and stuff, right? So if you studied triangles, right, in grade 8, 9, and 10, you learn about opposite, hypotenuse, and uh, adjacent, right? So if you have, let's do this in red, if you have a triangle, And here's your angle, right? You call this side the opposite. You call this side the adjacent to theta. And you call this side the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Okay. Looney Woo, thank you very much for the follow. Right? So you learn you learn that sine theta sine of this angle is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse opposite divided by hypotenuse okay now keep this in mind this is uh, this is uh, a ratio right so what it's saying is this it's saying this side divided by this side is sine theta, right? So sine of this angle is defined as the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Okay. 
Why is this important? Because no matter how big your triangle is or how small your triangle is, So let's draw another right angle triangle. So we have two triangles here, right? We got this and we got the bigger triangle. And this side is again the opposite side from this angle. And this whole length again is the hypotenuse, right? Goes all the way to there, right? And this one is the smaller hypotenuse. So sine of this angle is still going to be the opposite side relative to the hypotenuse. So we don't even need to draw the hypotenuse twice right? because it's the same hypotenuse. So I'm going to erase this and just call this height. height. And the hypotenuse depends on which triangle you're talking about, right? So sine of an angle is basically saying that, hey, the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse is going to be the same no matter how big or how small the triangle is. Now we've got three triangles. That's the opposite. That's the hypotenuse. This ratio is going to be the same. So for a given angle, for a given angle, let's say, let's say we have 30 degrees, right? Here, let me write that bigger so you see it better. Let's say you have 30 degrees. let's say you have 30 degrees right this side divided by this side would be the same as if you had a smaller triangle and if this was 30 degrees would be the same as this side divided by this side okay so if this was the same as this and this was a and this was B right and this was X and this was Y the sign trigonometry tells us this that a over b a over b would have to be equal to x over y oops x over x over y not y over x x over y x over y right why is this important well this is they're called similar triangles this is those models when you're building models and stuff if you're into collecting anything or if you're into engineering interested in engineering or models or anything really right when you look at it when they say oh this model is you know one to ten or ten to one right that's this is what they're talking about so for example if this was you right this is called proportionality by the way right Sim they call it similar triangles in trigonometry but you can also call it proportional they're proportional right so if you have you, you here and there's a little mini you right and your height is let's say six feet and your arm is two feet I don't know if that would be a legit or not two feet two feet three feet <laughs> yeah, but two, two feet is pretty small that's like t-rex level arms isn't it so let's say three feet right so let's say your arms are three feet and if you want to make a little mini version of you that is two feet tall then you can figure out how big the arm needs to be right because all you do you say this divided by this has to equal that divided by that so all you would do is say six divided by three is equal to two over x cross multiply doink, doink. you get six x is equal to six and divide by uh, 6 so x is equal to 1 so you have to make this 1 your arm 1 feet right 10 minute warning are we into 2 hours already elder god wow time flies what yeah yeah we're gonna go over time a little bit a little bit sorry gang right I need you to put me in detention and reform out Ronnie says he's a good man thanks he does so I just want to make that clear that sometimes it's not clear when they teach Soko to to you guys initially when you're studying uh, detention detention for us when they teach you uh, trigonometry in grade 8 9 and 10 
it's not clear that why is sine important is because the sine of an angle is the same value for any size triangle wow incredible the ratio of one side divided by the other side for any given angle is the same cool this also applies to cos theta which is adjacent over hypotenuse adjacent over hypotenuse and it also applies to tan theta which is opposite over adjacent opposite over adjacent right now take this information that you know right take this information that we just learned that for a given angle the ratio of one side to another side is the same right take this triangle apply it here to a unit circle right to a unit circle okay and realize that a unit circle is a circle defined as having a radius one right and realize that hey wait a second this thing tells us it doesn't make a difference how big the triangle is you could have a bigger triangle and if you drew a circle we can't even do it my, my triangle is so big right you can draw a circle Come all the way down. Wee, 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 wee. You could take a bigger circle. My circle is off. You could take a bigger circle, right? You could take a bigger circle. And this graph is going to look almost identical. The only thing that's going to change is the radius. This is just going to change, right? So if the radius of this is 2, right? We take a unit circle, we multiply the radius by two, right? Double the radius. All that's gonna happen, this wave is gonna look the same. It's gonna have the same motion. The only thing that happens is it goes from two all the way down to negative two. So it just amplifies it, right? It just makes it look like that. Wow, cool. Now we can take circles and if we were making music you could take this music right you could take these waves and amplify them <laughs> make sound cool but wait a second it's going to have the same pattern all it is just going to amplify it right well we can take the same graph right and graph it based on how fast it goes around right if remember we talked about if it takes one second one day one week one month one year one decade if this zero to 360 instead of being an angle if it was time how long does it take for it to go around right what you can do is create waves that are not only amplified differently bigger or smaller but also change in frequency the period changes this is called a period how long it takes to do one cycle right so all of a sudden you could do obviously it should be a better graph it should be a... right maybe we could do it here faster cycle right and what you can do with these things you can multiply them you can add them you can move them you can translate them right you could do a lot of things once you understand the base mathematics of trigonometry these functions these formulas what you can do is you can take what color is going to stand up you can take a general sine function you can say it's a function right here let's do a little bit of erasing we'll kill this right so our function up here is 
f of x is equal to sine theta, right? That's what it is, f of x being your y, right? What you can do is manipulate this thing. You could go f of x is equal to a number. So we know what this looks like. This guy looks like our green graph, right? Well, what if we want to graph the following function? Negative 2 sine, um, oh, I'm not going to use pi. I haven't talked about pi yet. <laughs> sine uh, 3 theta plus 4 uh, minus, actually plus 6, right? So let's say this is our function. We've taken our original function and we're going to do this to it. Well, what does that do? Well, the negative 2 flips the original function this way and it makes the radius 2. So it amplifies it by a factor of 2. This guy, 3 here, compresses the function to a third of its period. This guy here moves it 4 units back. Right? This guy here moves it 6 units up. So we're taking our original function and manipulating it. And this can be done with to model certain either physical or um, uh, physical systems like a Ferris wheel, right? You can model a Ferris wheel based on a sine function, tides of the ocean, you can model this way. Or you can use these types of things to model market reactions and stuff like this. Okay, uh, That's sort of a good intro to the power of trigonometry and why it is you study right angle triangles because you want to study circles. Why do you want to study circles? Because you want to know what cyclic functions, how cyclic functions behave. Why do you want to study how cyclic functions behave? Because cyclic functions are embedded in our societies, are embedded in our lives, are embedded in nature. They're part of life, right? And once you can model life, man, you can do a lot of things with it, right? You could do a lot of things with it. Okay. That's trigonometry. And it just explodes from there, right? And we have a playlist, trigonometry playlist. Here, I'll link it up for you guys. Um, on our sensor tube channel, if you go to, do, 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 if you go to our sensor tube playlist or sensor tube channel and go to playlist, I'm just going to do this math. Where's my trigonometry playlist? Uh, da, da, da. Hey. Hmm. Trick. Trick. Oh, I should put math on there too so people can find it. Silly me. Math didn't bring it up. Boink. Here's our trigonometry playlist. Okay. See, that's excellent. I like how you describe the function here. Yeah, it's super cool. It, it's crazy cool and we we can get on it uh, next time as well uh, just talk about it Here, let me save this Boink. there we go okay cool Boink. Uh, we sort of did a not a quick ending sort of brought it all together again sort of did a little summary um, but that's a good little intro for it and we didn't go too much over time. That's good. That's good. Uh, and we can definitely explore this uh, more in the future and look at different functions and actually graph something like this, right? And do the translation. So maybe in the next math stream, we'll pick up from here and just graph something like this based on what we created here. We'll create a table and I'll show you how it's done. Super cool. Super cool way of doing it. And so easy. So easy. Now Sal gets Chicho vaccine. That's, that's, yeah, and Via, and Via. They might be passed out now. They might be passed out. They were running around, playing around and stuff like this. Um, gang, let's call the stream. Let's call the stream. That was fun. That was definitely fun. Yofes, thank you very much for the follow. 
salutations salutations and we're welcome to our uh, live stream channel and gang do not forget do not forget free assange free assange free assange julian assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity something that we desperately need in our societies for more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist on Censor 2. Okay. See that? Thank you for the compliment. See that? <laughs> Yang, if you want to know what this work is about, I am on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash chicho, C H Y C H O. You can follow the work there. We have a sub stack page as well and a subscribe star page. My pleasure, Porqua. My pleasure, Porqua. You can definitely follow the work there. For those of you that are supporting this work on Patreon and on Substack for now, thank you very much for the support, as well as the people that are supporting us on Twitch. It is in large part because of the support that we're getting on these two platforms, including the handful of people that are supporting us on Sensor2, uh, that we're able to do what it is that we are doing. And I thank you very much, as well as the support we're getting from the mods, both on Twitch, on our video sharing platforms and on our little server that we've built a little community that uh, we're sharing information and discussing things and talking about things and trying to figure things out including talking about mathematics uh, and gang we do announce these live streams uh, 30 minutes before we go live on Twitter minds VK gap uh, parlor and getter you can follow the work there and we do have a SoundCloud page where we upload certain podcasts, uh, certain streams of podcasts on SoundCloud. And those podcasts are available on, uh, should be available on your favorite podcasting platform. Thanks, was fun. Yeah, super fun. I love explaining trig. So much fun. It takes a fair bit of concentration to be able to link everything up. Uh, and sometimes and it's different every time almost different every time because sometimes I put in more things sometimes I put in things I shouldn't have put in because I was trying to go in this direction I go on a tangent I gotta come back track it's super fun it's super fun as a as, a, as an educator someone that teaches it uh, I've been doing it for 20 plus years and I still love it because it keeps me sharp that's what mathematics does gang really you want to become smarter learn mathematics you want to become master of your own domain your own life learn mathematics it it's my it's my important recommendation to everyone right you want to be a, be a free thinking human being in control of your own destiny learn mathematics aside from that gang uh, i hope you have a fantastic next couple of days we're mapping global conflicts on tuesday starting at 1 p.m part four Join us if you can. Bye, everyone.